You probably clicked on this video because you want to try to make a crochet temperature blanket this year. Well, you're in the right place because in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you all of the tips and tricks that I learned this past year making my first temperature blanket and all the things that I wish I knew before starting this huge project. We will be undercovering the truth, the good, and the bad about making your own temperature blanket, and I cannot wait to share all my tips with you in today's video. Hey, 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 makers. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Cameron if you're new here and I make content all about selling your crochet so that you can make more money doing more of what you love. The temperature blanket is a personal project that I took on this last year in 2023 because we got married in January of 2023 and I thought it would be a really special year to do a temperature blanket to track all of the weather of the year that we got married. So that is why I chose to do a temperature blanket this last year but I've been wanting to do one for so long. It was pretty intimidating though because I knew it was going to be a huge commitment. I don't think I was actually ready for how big of a commitment it really was. Here is my temperature blanket. Oh, <laughs> now my temperature blanket isn't complete this year yet and I have a ton of ends to weave in, so don't judge me, but I just wanted to show you what it's looking like right now. I still have the last month, December, to go, but it is pretty much complete and I have learned so much over the last year of making this blanket and I just wanted to start this video by explaining explaining what a temperature blanket even is. <laughs> so a temperature blanket is when you crochet one row every day for the entire year. Now your color that you use for that day matches with what the temperature was that day. You'll actually make your own temperature key that lets you know what color to do with whatever temperature was that day. So you're doing a row every single day for an entire year. So this blanket is going to have a total of 365 rows on it and each day is going to have the color that corresponds with that temperature of the day. Now usually people do ranges of temperature. They don't go by every single degree because you would have a hundred different types of yarn to work with. So I went by every 10 degrees. So this color here is for 40 degree weather and that's the last row I did. So it could have been 42 degrees Degrees, it could have been 48 degrees, but it is the 40 degree color. So that is what a temperature blanket is. I'm not sure who created this trend or who started the temperature blanket, but if you know, go ahead and comment down below. This is definitely not something that I came up with. It's something that I've seen a ton of other makers do, and I definitely wanted to try it out this year, and I definitely don't regret it, but there are some things that I wish I knew ahead of time, so that is what we are going to be chatting about in today's video. First, I want to make it a point that this is a huge commitment. Now you're probably thinking, yeah, it's a huge commitment. It's every day for the full year, but I don't know what it was last January. I was thinking, oh, this will just be so fun and it's going to be easy. It's just a row every day, whatever. It's fine. And a few months in, I was struggling to keep up on my temperature blanket. So this is something that I want you to keep in mind that it is a huge commitment and the motivation you have in January is going to be different to the motivation you have halfway through the year when it's June and it's warm and you're busy and it's gonna be harder to keep up on your temperature blanket. So I just want you to know that this is a huge commitment to commit to doing something every single day for a full year is huge. Now, I don't know, maybe it's just because in January we make all these goals and we get all excited and then a couple months go by and we realize, wow, that was a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. I think that's what happened with me with the temperature blanket. I just wanna put a huge point on this. It is a huge commitment. So if you are not ready to commit every single day, or at least weekly, we'll get into that later. But if you're not willing to commit to the full year, that's totally okay. You can do a half year one. You can do a quarter of the year on your temperature blanket, but just know if you're wanting to do the full year, it is a huge commitment. There are a few points for me this last year that I started getting behind on my temperature blanket. One was in June because I was prepping for this huge show. So I was crocheting a ton and I just didn't really have the motivation to work on it because I was crocheting all sorts of things. I was making a lot of amigurumi at the time and I just didn't feel like sitting down and doing my rows. So I got about three weeks behind. Now catching up was hard. So I really highly suggest to keep up on your temperature blanket as much as you can. I know life happens. I know it gets hard, but if you can keep up and not let yourself get more than a couple weeks behind at a time, because once you get far enough behind, it's really hard to catch up. The other time that I got behind this last year was when we were moving. I got a couple weeks behind. The way I was able to catch up both 
these times was doing two rows every day instead of one and so I was able to catch up that way and I wasn't completely overwhelming myself with it but I just want to let you know it's a huge commitment and if you fall behind it is really hard to catch back up so just make sure that you are able to do it this year if you're not able to commit to that that's totally okay it just might not be a project that you're going to want to do or at least do for the full year because it is pretty hard to keep up with now I don't want to discourage you from doing it I'm just warning you that this is the troubles that I ran into when I was working on my temperature blanket this last year but halfway through the year I did figure out a new system that I really liked with my temperature blanket before I was doing it every night before bed I was doing a row before bed and it was working okay for me but I did get behind a couple of times like I mentioned and I had to come up with a new system that worked better for me and my schedule and that was sitting down and doing all seven of my rows for the week on one day out of the week so on Sundays I will sit down I'll pop on my current show which right now is Gilmore Girls I'm totally in the middle of binging Gilmore Girls right now and so I'll pop on my show I'll watch a couple episodes and get through all of my rows for the entire week in one sitting and that has worked way better for me in my schedule so I don't have to worry about fitting into my schedule every single day I just have to fit a bigger block into my schedule one time a week do whatever works for you maybe it's every other day maybe it's once a month you sit down and you really get a lot of rows done for me it takes me about 10 minutes to work on one row so I like to do it weekly so I sit down for an hour hour and a half work on my rows and there we go we're good to go for the week and I actually really look forward to doing it weekly now and that's been something that has worked really well for me so if you're worried about the daily commitment consider trying to do it every week so I personally chose Sunday because that's a day that Peyton and I kind of hang out around the house we have a chill day and I watch a lot of my shows and do a lot of crocheting anyways so it's just a nice way for me to fit that into my schedule next I want to talk about this point it is so expensive to do a temperature blanket it is so expensive I remember I was showing my mom the temperature blanket the other day and she goes you should sell these and I go mom if I were to actually sell these and make enough for my time I would be having to charge thousands of dollars nobody would buy that right so to put it into perspective I can do about 14 rows with one skein of yarn so again we're doing a total of 365 rows for the entire year so that averages about about 26 total skeins of at least the yarn that I was using which is a little bit more on the pricey side I guess I'm using the Heartland yarn from Lion Brand but it's not super expensive but 26 skeins definitely adds up so if I was paying full price for all of these skeins which by the way I wasn't I was shopping sales and shopping coupons but if I was paying full price for all of these skeins of yarn all 26 would cost me about $169 for this blanket and that doesn't even include all my time. That is just the cost of yarn to make this blanket. Now, like I said, I did shop a ton of sales and I used a ton of coupons. So I got my yarn every time at Joann's. So the first time I went and grabbed all of my colors for my blanket, I grabbed about two skeins of each color. No, I grabbed about two skeins of the colder colors and one skein of the warmer colors. Anyways, when I did that original buy a ton of yarn, they were on sale. So that way I could save a bit right off the bat. And then every time I ran back to Joann's, I was able to grab those with a coupon, usually a 40 or or 50 or sometimes 60% on coupon which was super nice for me to be able to save that way so I definitely didn't spend the full $169 but I spent a lot <laughs> I still spend a lot I'm sure it was over a hundred dollars because sometimes the sales were better but sometimes they were and I just had to get the yarn because I did not want to fall behind so there you go super expensive to make one of these but it is spread out over a full year so if you think about it it's really not that much especially because it's such a cool project and it is kind of an investment but it's such a beautiful piece that hopefully will be around in your family for a really long time and it's gonna be really special so I think it is worth how much it costs I just want to let you know it is not cheap to make one of these okay also time can we talk about each row taking me 10 minutes it doesn't sound like that long every day 10 minutes oh that's not a big deal but total that is 60 hours 60 hours going into this blanket and I know it doesn't sound like a ton especially when it's spread out over an entire year but still 60 hours if I were to actually sell this 
I would have to be charging so much for my time. Even if I was charging $10 an hour, which I charge more than that, but even if I was charging $10 an hour, that's so much money already. And then on top of that, the materials. So anyway, just saying the temperature blanket probably isn't a good idea to sell, at least at craft shows or something like that. But it might be a fun gift idea if you love the person enough to spend that much time and that much money on the project. I think I could totally see myself doing this for friends' babies or our future babies where uh, it's our first year or even first couple months of them being born. So that's another idea for you if you're wanting to do this as a gift for somebody. Think about doing it in just a couple months and not the full year. It's gonna cut back on time and costs and you can just do a smaller project, even a smaller throw size blanket or even just a pillowcase or a scarf. There's other projects that you can do with the same temperature blanket idea, but not the full blanket for a full year if you're looking to cut back on costs or time. Also, I just wanted to mention, you don't have to use the yarn that I was using for this temperature blanket as well. There are more affordable yarns out there, but the yarn that I decided to use was mainly because of how soft it was, but also the quality and I love the color palette. I really loved the colors. We'll chat more about colors here in a minute, but that's why I chose this yarn. And again, it's a little bit more on the pricey side. You can find more budget friendly yarn options to make your temperature blanket with, but that is just something I just wanted to let you know. <laughs> Next tip I have for you is be prepared as far as if you're running out of a color of yarn and you only have two or three rows left in it, go run to your local Joann's and get that color or order that color right away because I don't want you to fall behind on your blanket because you don't have that color available to work with. That happened to me a couple times where I got a few days behind because I just didn't have the color for that row and I can't work ahead. You know, I can't just skip that row because because that color matches that day and you can't work ahead. So if you don't have that color that you need for your next row, it's really hard to stay up to date because, well, you can't because you don't have that color. So that's something to keep in mind. So for me, when I was getting about halfway through a skein of yarn, I made it a priority to hit up Joann's. I mean, I'm there all the time anyways, but just made sure that I was checking that yarn because a couple of times I went and they didn't have the color I needed. So I had to order online. I just wanted to make sure I had enough time to wait for that shipment to come in as well. And there was a couple times that I had to run to a different Joann's in town that was farther away because I just needed that color so bad to keep up with my temperature blanket. So that's just your reminder to be prepared ahead of time with all of your colors. Once you build that habit of doing it daily or doing it weekly like I do, it's really hard to break. You really don't want to break that habit once you have that habit of doing it either daily or weekly or whenever you can do it. That habit that you have, you don't want to break it just because you don't have the colors on you. It's really hard already to keep up and build that habit. And I would hate for you to break that habit just because you weren't prepared with the next color that you need. I also wanted to mention you do not have to start a temperature blanket on the first day of the new year. That's what I chose to do. That's what a lot of people choose to do, but it doesn't have to be. Maybe it's five days into the new year. It's January 5th. 2023 and you want to start your blanket on the 5th that is totally okay it is your blanket you can start on whatever day you could start in june you can start in july august you can start in the middle of summer you can do a quarter of a year you can do half the year you could do a full year you could do three years i don't know that blanket would be so big i don't know if that would be i mean you can do it. It's just gonna be a big blanket. But I just want to let you know that your temperature blanket is yours. You can customize it to whatever fits your needs and your time that you have available. Maybe January is a really busy month for you and you want to start in February. Go for it. Go for it. Go from February to January or go from February to February of 2025. Whatever you want to do, it's up to you. It's your blanket. And there are some temperature blanket rules that people follow, but really in general, it's your blanket. You can start whenever you like. Next, this one was really hard for me, but I had to learn to embrace some imperfections in my blanket. It is such a huge project and I'm towards the end of it now, right? I have about a month left and I know the first few rows on my temperature blanket, you can see even here, it's almost a little, no, this is the beginning. Let's see. You can see that my tension was a little bit looser and I don't know, maybe you can't see. It's almost kind of wavy down here where it's like a little bit too loose. This was my first few rows. I am not gonna unravel it to fix this. I can't, I wouldn't be able to. This is 60 hours almost, you know? It's so many hours of work that I'm not gonna go all the way back to fix these first few rows that aren't really feeling like they were perfect. You know, oh, and you see some imperfection, you see you missed a stitch. A hundred rows back, you missed a stitch. 
You gotta leave it. You gotta embrace the imperfections, okay? You're not selling this item probably anyways. It's made with love, okay? So a machine didn't make this, a human being made this. You are amazing for doing this. Just give yourself a little grace. You're gonna have to accept some imperfections because you will notice some. And it was actually pretty good for me as a perfectionist to notice them. I love it anyways. I love it even though it does have some imperfections. Oh my gosh, I have so many ends to weave in. It's not even funny. Pro tip, weave in your ends after every row or crochet over your ends. I don't know why I didn't start doing that. I weaved in my ends for a while and then the rest of the blanket has a lot of ends to weave in. So that's gonna be lovely to do at the end of the year. <laughs> I just wanna make sure you're not taking your temperature blanket too seriously. It's meant to be fun. It's meant to be a cool project, you know? So there's some imperfections. It's all good. It's fine. Is it kind of wonky? Is it a little bit bigger than you thought? It's a little bit smaller than you thought? Don't stress about it too much. Not get unravel the whole thing and restart. Please don't do that. It's good. It's great. <laughs> it's made with love. It's perfectly imperfect. You're good to go. Don't stress about it too much. It's meant to be fun. I'm talking to myself right now. <laughs> Next tip that I found really helpful was keeping record of temperatures throughout the week, especially if you're looking to just do them weekly. So writing down, jotting down those temperatures throughout the week, or I found a website where I can look back at past weather reports in my area. So I will link that in the description box down below if you wanna go check out that website and you can just look up past weather. And that was super helpful for me to just keep track of the highs and the lows and everything that I needed to know. Well, actually that brings me to my next point and that is I tracked the highs of every day and that is what I ended up doing for my temperature blanket. This is the high temperature. This is the, the peak of how warm it was or cold, <laughs> but I, I was tracking the highs. I was not doing the averages. It was one, a little less work for me, but two, I got more variation in my colors in my blanket because the highs were a little bit more all over the place than if I was just taking the averages of each day, but totally up to you. It's your temperature blanket, do what you want. But I just heard somewhere that somebody else mentioned that they wish they did the highs and that's what I did this year. And I really loved how the pattern turned out. So if I were to do another temperature blanket, which I'm thinking about doing another one, just because I already have the habit and it was a lot of fun. Uh, I would just continue doing the highs of each day. I think that worked out really well for me. Lastly, I wanna chat about the color scheme. I feel like when I first wanted to do a temperature blanket, I thought that you had to use these super vibrant rainbow colors, which no shade on those colors. They're super fun. I just couldn't picture myself working with those colors because I don't ever work with those colors in my business. That's just not my style, my home decor style. And the colors that I have in our home and so I just wasn't really motivated to make a temperature blanket because I thought you had to use super bright neon colors. They had to be, you know, blue had to be for the super cold day. And then there had to be a red and a yellow and a green. There had to be the whole range of colors. And you know what? I saw somebody's temperature blanket on Instagram and it had really soft pastel colors. It was so pretty and it really motivated me to start a temperature blanket because it really broke me out of that way of thinking that I thought it had to be these only, like only these colors. You can choose whatever colors you'd like. I mean, my color palette, I don't have, well, I guess this is kind of a greeny. I have a lot of colors that I have in my home. I'm a big pink fan probably know that by now, but I love the pink. So I was really excited to find a lot of pink colors. I love neutrals. These blues are really pretty. And I just really was motivated by this color palette and it really inspired me. It got me super excited to work on the temperature blanket. So I just wanted to mention that, that you don't have to use the colors that you see all the time on the temperature blanket, or you can, you can use those colors. If those really inspire you, you love that style and you wanna have that in your home, go for it. Like you just do what you wanna do if you want yours to be all blacks in different shades of gray do that do that i think that'd be cool it'd be interesting and different and i just want you to do whatever inspires you whether that is working with the same colors that i did i will link them down below and i will also be doing a full youtube video on a tutorial on how i made mine and i will share all of the other details like the amount of chains i did the stitches i did just all the details on how to make this if you want a video like that go ahead and comment down below i'm planning on making one but um, um, just by you commenting or liking this video and letting me know that that's a video you want, I will definitely uh, make that for you. But yeah, what else would I want to say? Something that I love to do with my colors is the cooler tones I put with the cooler days and the warmer tones with the pinks and kind of these browns were warmer days and that just made more sense to me. But you can do whatever you want. You can mix it around. Do what, do what feels right for you and your temperature blanket. Another thing that I did was I added, well, I added a white strip for our wedding day. 
So that was the 22nd of January. That's why it was right here at the beginning. And then I also, for really cold days, I have more of a contrast color and really hot days. We had three days that were over 100 degrees over the summer all in a row. So I used more of a contrasted color here as well, just because I wanted those to pop out a bit more, but pick out other colors for your birthday, for special holidays, special days, if you're getting married, if you're having a baby, things like that are super fun to uh, just add as your row for the day. So I don't do the temperature, I just did the white as the row for the day. So yeah, there's a little fun extra thing that you can do in your temperature blanket. I will definitely chat more about that in the actual tutorial I do on how to make your own temperature blanket. All in all, I don't regret doing my temperature blanket. I actually want to do another one. It was a lot of fun. Again, it was huge commitment. It was expensive and there was a lot of time invested into this project, but I think it was totally worth it. It's really cool. I actually got a custom tag to put on there as well that says we got married this year. It's temperature blanket 2023 Spokane, Washington or first year of marriage. It says something like that on there. It's going to be super cute on there. So I'm super excited to have this finished and also share that tutorial on how to make one as well. But I hope this video gave you some inspiration and now you know if a temperature blanket is the right project for you this next year. And if you're watching this in the middle of July, yes, you can still start a temperature blanket. It doesn't matter what time of year it is. Start the temperature blanket whenever it works for you and your schedule. Choose colors that inspire you. Just be aware that's a huge time commitment and it's going to cost you a lot, but it is spread out over a full year year so don't stress about it too much again this is meant to be fun and I can't wait to see the temperature blankets that you work on this next year if you love this video be sure to like it down below and let me know and I can make more videos like this one I had so much fun hanging out with you in today's video I would love to keep hanging out with you here on YouTube so if you want to keep hanging out I will see you my friend in this video right here bye